single best chart. Let's do it now with John Taft of Baird in celebration of a bell ringing today. And Russ Kosterich of BlackRock uh, with us. Ed Hyman, thank you so much. But this is log inflation expectations. I got to always do one better than uh, the good Mr. Hyman. Slope matters, the great disinflation off of Volcker, massive inflation stability in our expectations. And Russ Kosterich, we have rolled over with a vengeance. What is the character of the rollover in inflation expectations? I think it's the fact that, you know, despite all the concerns, and remember, go back to 2010, 11, QE is going to create this massive inflation, never happened. And what has happened is this slow grind down, not only in inflation, but inflation volatility. And it looks like that is very much a function of secular factors, of demographics, of technology. Right of the change in the business model in so many industries. And it's not clear why that would stop anytime soon. But what is so important about this, as I mentioned, my book of the summer, Raghurajan's Third, Third Pillars, is John Taft, in the great Midwest, we have an opioid crisis. We have what Raghurajan calls 10 Vietnams. Is the disinflation that we're seeing a slowdown due to anemic economic growth in too many parts of America? Well, I, I think the important thing about this chart is it gives the Fed some uh, cover for yeah, so that not tightening. Yeah. And, and probably the biggest policy mistake that could be made right now would be premature monetary tightening in the face of the kind of global slowdown and growth that is no question affecting the U.S. economy. Russ, do you agree with that? Has the Fed effectively lost the window where they could hike? I don't know if they've lost the window, but I, I completely agree with John that they can take their time. There is not a buildup of inflationary pressures. Uh, wage growth is picking up a bit, but it's been modest relative to other cycles. So I completely agree that there's nothing pressuring the Fed to act imminently. Yeah, what about, Russ, for example, a lot of people saying that they need those tools, that in the case of a downturn, if they're at, uh, you know, if, if they've already used up a lot of the tools, they don't yeah. have anything to combat the next recession with, which could be 18 months, 24 months down the road. I, I think that is going to be a challenge. I mean, if you just go back and look at the simple numbers, in previous cycles, the Fed cuts about 400 basis points. It's not obvious they're going to get anywhere near that level, which means that their, uh, their latitude to ease monetary conditions when the next recession hits is going to be limited. And that problem is compounded by the fact that given recent deficits, you may not have the fiscal latitude either. So I think one of the challenges is the next recession may not be that deep, but we may be slow to come out of it given that the typical tools you rely on may not be as available. John, when do you think the next recession will hit? Well, we've been saying for quite some time that we think we're more in the middle innings of this economic cycle than towards the end of the game. We think there's a lot of runway left. Uh, you know, the U.S., while it's being affected by global slowdown and growth, has never followed into a recession. It's always led, and our economy is still strong right now, the envy of the world. And we've never gone into a recession with real interest rates below 2%. We're still pretty close to zero, half a percent right now. Mm -hmm. So we think there's still a, a, a ways to go before the recession that would affect the markets hit. To the two of you, I want to know if there's going to be a change in use of cash. Quickly, Russ, a change in the use of cash. Do we still see share buybacks and dividend increase? I think you are going to see buybacks. I think you're going to see more dividend increases. Uh, yield is becoming still a, it's still a very rare commodity. It's something investors value. It's something that can actually right. help us stop. Do you agree with, I mean, Bears out there trumping blue chip, blue chip, blue chip. Do you agree it's still blue? Well, I think on, on buybacks, Tom, I think you had an anomaly in the the amount of buyback activity that took place last year. Not the tax law. No, because yeah. that's $700 billion come back, a third of which was used by uh, for buybacks. Anyway, what's wrong with buybacks? I suppose if Martin you have better use, say nothing. nothing's wrong it. with buybacks. But yeah. you're, you're going to see them, but not at the same level that we did last year. 